The Israeli-Palestinian conflict is perhaps the most contested geopolitical event of modern history. Is Israel the freest country in the Middle East, or the most oppressive regime known to mankind? When a Jewish woman speaks out against Israel, is it time to condemn the country? Or is such a person a useful idiot for anti-Semites who would see Israel and all Jews exterminated from the earth? I have no doubt this video will elicit some strong reactions from many of you, but bear with me as I share my thoughts on this heated issue and review the claims of Carrie Wedler, a so-called self-hating Jew. Alright, so Carrie starts us off with a quote attributed to Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion by author Nahum Goldman, allegedly meant to show that even Israel's first Prime Minister confirms the prominent narrative that Jews, mercilessly and unprovoked, invaded the land of Israel and stole it from its rightful Arab owners. I don't think it's necessarily unfair for her to use this quote, but in isolation like this and at the very beginning of the video, this ends up being a case of poisoning the well. This one quote doesn't capture the thousands of pages of writings we have from Ben-Gurion himself. David Ben-Gurion wrote a 10-volume history on the founding of Israel. He firmly believed in the right of Jews to possess the land, worked to achieve this through lawful purchasing of land prior to 1948, and worked tirelessly throughout his career to establish peace between the Arabs and the Jews. Does this mean he never did anything bad, or even that he was a good person? No. The man was a socialist for crying out loud. But if you think this one quote accurately captures Ben-Gurion's views regarding Israel, then you clearly haven't read the thousands of other pages that come directly from him. Remember, this is a quote attributed to Ben-Gurion, and assuming it is genuine, it needs to be understood in its immediate context and in the broader context of Ben-Gurion himself. My name is Carrie, and if you can't tell from my dark hair and dark eyes and pale skin, I have some Jewish blood in me. While my last name is fully German and unrelated to my Jewish cultural family history, the truth is, is that I was raised knowing that that was a part of who I was. And even though I was raised in a totally secular way by amazing parents who taught me that all humans are the same and it doesn't matter what distinctions we apply to ourselves, I couldn't help but assume when seeing an Israeli flag growing up my whole life that because it had a Star of David on it, that it was associated with me. I find it significant that you open your video stating those things in that particular order. You state first that you have Jewish blood, i.e. you're descended from the Jewish race, the physical seed of Abraham. But you then state that you were raised in an entirely secular fashion, which I have to assume means you don't practice or believe in Judaism, the faith of Abraham. However, at the same time you acknowledge that growing up you couldn't help but feel that the Israeli flag was associated with you. And I have to ask, why do you think that was? You weren't born in Israel. You don't practice Judaism. Yet ethnicity and perhaps some cultural family practices were sufficient for you to feel connected with a foreign country. Why is that? Why is Israel different from other nation states in this regard? Is the nation of Israel about a race? A religion? A political movement? This isn't a question that's easily answered, but nonetheless, around the world, people tend to associate Israel with Jewishness, whether we're talking about the race, the religion, or any other component of what might be regarded as Jewishness. Now, I presume that in this video you're going to claim that you're not opposed to Jews or Jewishness, but that you are opposed to Israel. So I'd like to know how you separate the two. Does Jewishness have anything to do with Israel, or are the two totally separate? It seems to me that Israel's enemies sure think the two are associated. Why is it that pro-Palestinian protesters feel legitimate in violently attacking synagogues in France as a reaction to something a foreign government thousands of miles away has done? And that that meant that it had to be good, because I couldn't fathom that the Jewish people, or something that claimed to represent the Jewish people, could do anything bad. And if they did, they must have had a justification for it. So I became politically aware and active, and I started speaking out against war and violence and corruption and hate. But I always avoided looking into the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, because I didn't want to have to accept that Israel could be doing something wrong. And as I just said, why? Why were you under the impression that crimes committed by Israel would implicate Jewish people as a whole? Couldn't you have accepted that when Israel commits crimes, it deserves to be condemned? Just as when Hamas commits crimes, it deserves to be condemned? 
or when the US government commits crimes, or any other government in the world. I mean, I'm an ANCAP for crying out loud. Government of any kind inevitably commits crimes. Why is it that when Israel commits crimes, somehow it's categorically more wicked than any other government on earth? But in light of the recent conflict in Gaza, I had to start looking at the facts and I had to start doing research. And when I came up with questions and started asking Jews and others who support Israel what they thought about what I had researched and all of the facts I presented, I was met with some pretty extreme hostility. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but do you really think that this is only true of Israel supporters? I can't count how many times I've discussed this issue with anti-Zionists only to be told, that's not true, it's just Zionist propaganda. You can't trust that media source because it's controlled by the Zionists. Lies, 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 Zionist propaganda! How about we take a more reasonable position and acknowledge that there are people on both sides of this issue that clearly have agendas. If we're going to be objective, we do need to be diligent in doing research like you said, but we also have to acknowledge that both Israelis and Palestinians have, have, have done horrible things to each other, and there can never be peace so long as either side continues to harp on the previous wrongs done by the other. And the truth is, is that I've been afraid to say anything because of the giant, hostile, horrible, ferocious backlash that I have gotten from people who oppose what I have to say. But I can't stop now because it is my duty to ask questions, as is everyone's duty to ask questions of every government and anything that claims to be a force of good. I absolutely agree, Carrie. But I would ask you this. In your study of this issue, have you come to the conclusion that people on both sides of this conflict have done horrible things? Or have you only found facts that support the Palestinian narrative and condemn Israel? Whether we're talking about an ardent Zionist or rabid anti-Semite, I'm skeptical of the objectivity of anyone who comes down vehemently in support of one side or the other, or justifies violence done by one side or the other in virtue of the other side being worse. But when I ask questions, here's a little sample of what I was met with. Okay, there is truth to this quote, but last I checked, I don't see people who criticize Israel being silenced. In 2018, Israel was condemned 21 times by the United Nations, out of a total of 27 condemnations that year. Ilhan Omar recently made a media splash with her assertion that Jewish money is the only reason anyone in the U.S. supports Israel. Did she get kicked out of her job, or censored from making any more public statements? How about Rashida Tlaib, AOC, Bernie Sanders? How many prominent politicians, pundits, and celebrities regularly criticize Israel and find themselves gainfully employed nonetheless? In fact, there are publications in Israeli newspapers written by Palestinian citizens of Israel criticizing the Israeli government, such as this one, by a female Palestinian citizen of Israel. Why is this woman not in jail or silenced, seeing as she is herself a citizen of Israel? Further, how many Jewish women in Arab countries are publishing articles criticizing their governments? Why are children being murdered in shelters? You're biased. Assad and ISIS kill children all the time and no one says anything. They just hate Jews, so they mention it about Israel. You are correct that bias does not prove inaccuracy. It could be the case that a critic of Israel is biased against Israel and nonetheless correct. As to the claim that Israel is murdering children in shelters, I'd like to see the evidence that the IDF, as a matter of policy, deliberately targets Palestinian children and other non-combatants. Take a look at the articles you yourself included in the description box of your video. You cite three articles addressing IDF soldiers using Palestinian civilians as human shields, and two articles accusing the Israeli military of destroying civilian targets. I encourage everyone watching this video to read the articles that Carrie herself provided. When you do, you'll find something interesting. In all cases, they confirm that when Israel is accused of war crimes, the Israeli government investigates those allegations and prosecutes IDF soldiers when found to have committed war crimes. Quoting from the Haaretz news story that Kerry cites, Kumara Swamy accused Israeli soldiers of shooting Palestinian children, bulldozing a home with a woman and child still inside, and shelling a building they had ordered civilians into a day earlier. Israel's diplomatic mission in Geneva said it would respond to the allegations later Monday at a session of the UN Human Rights Council. But what about alleged atrocities committed by Hamas? This same article reports, the experts also noted reports that Hamas had committed other abuses. They said Hamas had been unwilling to investigate the allegations. 
In fact, in 2011, Richard Goldstone, the chair appointed by the UN Human Rights Council to investigate war crimes committed in the Gaza War of 08 and 09, reported, Israel has dedicated significant resources to investigate over 400 allegations of operational misconduct in Gaza, while the de facto authorities, i.e. Hamas, have not conducted any investigations into the launching of rockets and mortar attacks against Israel. In fact, there is substantial evidence confirming that Israel investigates and criminally charges IDF officers and soldiers found to have committed crimes against Palestinians, and that the IDF goes to great lengths to protect civilians while targeting terrorists. Can the same be said of Hamas or the Palestinian Authority? When is the last time it was reported that either of these groups investigated or punished their operatives for targeting non-combatants? Quite the opposite, in fact. At least in the case of the Palestinian Authority, schools and streets are actually named after terrorists who deliberately targeted and killed Israeli civilians. Now, to be clear, I am not defending war crimes committed by Israel or stating that IDF operatives have never gotten away with crimes against Palestinians. I am simply pointing out that the evidence does not support the accusation that Israel deliberately targets and kills Palestinian children. On the other hand, no one seems the least bit concerned about the fact that Hamas has been unwilling to investigate allegations of its own abuses. But doesn't Israel claim to be a democracy with humanitarian values? Um, hello, the IDF gives a five minute warning, which is plenty of time for, say, like a family of five to gather everyone in their family and a few of their precious belongings and try to hustle down a flight of stairs with other families also trying to run for their lives. And, you know, it doesn't matter that they're bombing their homes and their livelihoods because they gave the five minute warning. It's too late. Where do you expect them to evacuate to when they're surrounded by the IDF on one side and the sea on the other? Human shield, human shield. There has been some evidence of Hamas using human shields, but- Some evidence? Okay, Carrie, are you saying that it is factually inaccurate that Hamas uses civilians as human shields? The only article you cited in favor of this is from the UK Huffington Post. Now, even though I have concerns about the objectivity of the Huffington Post, let's just see what it says. Under point number five, Author Mahidi Hassan cites a BBC Middle East editor named Jeremy Bowen claiming that he personally saw no evidence that Hamas used Palestinians as human shields. Okay, great. So one guy didn't personally see any evidence, despite the fact that Hamas refuses to investigate any such allegations, unlike the IDF. However, UN reports have indeed confirmed that Hamas stores munitions inside schools, and captured Hamas training manuals reveal that Hamas specifically instructs its operatives to operate in densely populated civilian areas. The manual admits that Hamas knows that doing so will limit the IDF's ability to target them because they will try to limit civilian casualties. In fact, Hamas actually rejoices in the fact that if civilians are killed, it will help foster hate of Israel and support of Hamas. Just think about that for a second. Hamas wants its own civilians to die so that it can foster hate against Israel and support for their cause. As for Israel not giving civilians in Gaza enough warning before they attack, I'd be curious to know what you think Israel is supposed to do. Just sit around and let its own civilians be targeted by indiscriminate rocket attacks? As the ADL has stated with regards to these types of criticism, it should also be noted that many of those who accuse the IDF or individual Israeli soldiers of war crimes believe that military action can never be justified, and do not provide guidelines for what they would consider the justified use of force in the context of a state battling a terrorist organization entrenched in a densely populated area. But do you really think all of the thousands of civilians injured and killed by hundreds of tons of American-funded Israeli bombs were human shields? You're defending Hamas! And if so, if Israel is the moral superior here, why must they fall into Hamas's moral trap? The civilians deserve to die. They were within the vicinity of rocket launchers. If there are people claiming that Palestinian non-combatant civilians deserve to die, then I condemn those people in the harshest term possible. But again, the evidence would suggest that Hamas is trying to get its own civilians killed in order to foster more support for them and more hate against Israel. Earlier in the video, you flashed a quote from Voltaire stating, To learn who rules over you, simply find out who you are not allowed to criticize. According to the Huffington Post article that you cited, quote, Gazans have admitted that they were afraid of criticizing Hamas. Look in Israeli newspapers and you'll find vehement condemnation of actions taken by the IDF from Jewish and Arab citizens of Israel. 
How many Palestinians living in Gaza do you see condemning the rocket attacks that Hamas sends towards civilian targets? And why do you think that is? Obviously, Hamas is bad and a terrorist organization, but didn't the conflict start long before Hamas was ever created? Can you really blame it all on them? You're just a self-hating Jew. Rocket launchers, rocket launchers. Saying that the conflict started long before Hamas is misleading. While Hamas in its current form hasn't always existed, the Islamic anti-Semitism that drives Hamas has existed long before the modern Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and even before the modern Zionist movement came into existence. As Ari Zivotofsky writes, I hope I'm pronouncing that name right, Even Jews living in the land of Israel prior to 1917, when it was under Islamic rule, were subject to persecution. It was not the Zionists who initiated the return to the land in modern times, but rather the followers of the Grah, who in the early 19th century made their way to Eretz Yisrael from Europe. Settling in Safed, they bolstered the local Jewish community, which by 1830 numbered about 4,000, constituting half of the city's population. The day after Shavuot in 1834, Arab villagers attacked the Safed Jews, raped the women, destroyed the synagogues, and drove the Jews from their homes. Rabbi Menachem Mendel of Shaklov, again, sorry about my pronunciations, hid in a cave in the cemetery. When the mob found him, they gouged out one of his eyes. After 33 days of mayhem in which several Jews were killed, many more wounded, 500 Torah scrolls desecrated, and almost all of the Jewish possessions stolen or destroyed, relative calm was restored to Safed. Thus, even before the advent of modern Zionism, the local Muslims could not live in peace with their Jewish neighbors. I encourage everyone to read the entirety of Zivotofsky's article and check out the source material from which it's drawn. But the bottom line is that at no point in history has there not been an underlying hatred of Jews that originates from early Islamic sources, many of which are foundational to the ideology of Hamas. This is not simply a conflict between two groups of people who want to live in the same land. If the IDF is so advanced and Israel is so on the forefront of technology as people often claim, and they're so concerned with preserving innocent life, why haven't they figured out a more efficient and precise way to take out rocket launchers instead of bombing entire neighborhoods and families? How dare you question your homeland? This is a fair question, Carrie, and I am in no way claiming that every action taken by the IDF is just. They are, after all, directed by a government, and government is inherently unjust. However, since Hamas's own manuals state that they are actually trying to get their own civilians killed in an effort to defame Israel, I'm willing to extend more of a benefit of the doubt to Israel than you or most others seem to. Israel has shown a willingness to investigate and hold its own accountable for war crimes. Hamas, on the other hand, has shown that it would rather see its own people killed and impoverished than see Israel continue to exist. It refuses to investigate allegations of misconduct by its own and celebrates in the death of Israeli civilians. To be sure, horrible crimes have been committed by people on both sides, but why is Israel so categorically more evil than other nations in this regard? What about the fact that Israel actively tried to increase the influence of Hamas? You're lying! You're making that up, but I have the credible link right here. Those newspapers are biased. That means they're illegitimate. They just hate the Jews. Here, look at this meme from the IDF to get some real facts. Well, in one sense, true. This canard that Israel aided in the creation of Hamas is highly misleading. It implies that Israel wanted to create an armed terrorist group that attacks its people. Actually read the articles that Kerry provides. When you do, you'll find that what really happened is that Israel, in a foolish foreign policy decision, provided support to Hamas because they viewed Yasser Arafat and the Palestinian Liberation Organization as a greater threat. Much like the Muslim Brotherhood, who sowed the seeds of Hamas, Hamas initially focused on humanitarian work before it took a more active role in terrorism. Did Israel's support for Hamas backfire? Absolutely. The same thing happened to the U.S. when they funded the Mujahideen in Afghanistan because they viewed the Soviet Union as a greater enemy. This is kind of a trend. Covert operations by government tend to have unintended consequences, but that does not excuse the anti-Semitic terrorism of Hamas or make Israel and the Jewish people responsible for the actions now taken by Hamas. 
What about the IDF using Palestinians as human shields? Why is it that Egypt was able to clear so many of the tunnels leading there without killing innocent civilians? What about the fact that Hamas proper did not kidnap those three teenagers and the IDF had actually been performing airstrikes on Gaza before that ever happened? Why was it necessary to bomb a power plant that supplies electricity and water to innocent civilians? What about the UN shelters that were deemed and confirmed to be safe that the IDF still bombed? Anti-Semite, anti-Semite, moron. You want terrorists to wipe Israel off the map? We need to just wipe Gaza off the map. War is peace, Israel wants peace. You're a disgrace. You need to wake up. We had to bomb that hospital that the UN said had no rocket launchers because they had rocket launchers. Human shields, human shields, human shields. Come off, come off, come off. You're a I wish your grandparents had died in the Holocaust. When Palestinians learn to love their children more than they hate us, we'll have peace. Okay, of all those ridiculous responses that she's supposedly hearing, this one actually has merit. Now, I want to be clear that not all Palestinians necessarily adhere to the ideology of Hamas or the Palestinian Authority. However, an honest question needs to be asked. Do Palestinians, as a general rule, care more about living free and prosperous? or more about destroying their Jewish neighbors? Where is the Palestinian party that categorically rejects terrorism and stands in solidarity with Jews like Kerry who oppose Israel? Would Palestinians be as vehemently opposed to their oppressors if they were currently under the military occupation of Egypt, Jordan, or any other Arab state? Where was the outcry for an independent Palestinian state in the centuries that the region was controlled by the Ottomans? Despite the fact that history is full of examples where people of mistreated races can eventually move on from the wrongs that were done to their ancestors, Palestinians continually reject any peaceful solution proposed and state unequivocally that the only solution they will accept is the complete annihilation of Israel and subsequent subjugation or murder of Jews. The fact that groups like Hamas would rather see their own people killed and impoverished than see Israel's existence proves that this is far more than just opposition to a particular corrupt government. It is built on a deep-seated religious hatred of Jews. So what would this conflict look like if the Palestinians loved their own children more than they hated Jews? Hmm... I hope you go to Gaza and get murdered by the terrorists that you sympathize with. It is abhorrent that anyone would tell you that they hope you get murdered. But their concerns are not unfounded. Do you think that Hamas hates you any less because you're opposed to Israel? Or are you just another Jew to them? These people are savages. Okay, moving on. So, Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East. Finally, you get it. Why is segregation and racism against Arabs built into Israeli society and enforced by government decree? Why has Israel been caught torturing, detaining, and arresting Palestinian children? Why have doctors, journalists, and children playing on a beach been murdered? Every single Palestinian wants to kill every single Jew. Okay, there's a lot there. For starters, everyone go and read the article she posted about Israeli school segregation. There is a legitimate debate going on about the justice of Israel's Ministry of Education's policies, but rightly or wrongly, the debate is about separate Jewish and Muslim schools having different educational tracks based on religion, not ethnicity. In fact, in the very article that Kerry cites, it explicitly states that the Israeli Supreme Court has ruled against ethnic segregation in a private religious school. Notice also that the criticism is published in an Israeli newspaper. Tell me in what Arab country you're going to find Jews publishing criticisms of the Arab government. Yet in Israel, Arab and Jewish citizens alike can criticize the government publicly without fear of arrest. In Israel, Arabs have all the same rights as Jewish citizens. Arabs have the same voting rights, and Israel is in fact one of the few places in the Middle East where Arab women can vote. Arabs hold seats in the Knesset and on the Supreme Court. In fact, the only legal distinction between Arab and Jewish citizens is that Arabs are not required to serve in the IDF, although many do join the IDF of their own accord. As for Kerry's claims about Israelis torturing Palestinian children, again, if and when that happens, they should be condemned, and indeed, they often are, by the Israeli government no less. I'm again no fan of government, period, but is Israel really more wicked than North Korea? So you're against terrorism, obviously. Okay, so how do you justify the political violence of Zionist terrorist groups in the 1940s like Lehi, Irgun, and Haganah 
that collectively not only massacred Arab villages and killed Jews in the crossfire, but also assassinated a British foreign minister and also attempted to send letter bombs to heads of state all over the world, including Truman and Churchill, and later were dissolved and became members of the IDF. Why do you hate Israel so much? Obviously I categorically condemn terrorism, whether it comes from Arabs or Jews, Muslims or Zionists. And I condemn anyone who tries to claim it was justified regardless of what was done to them, or their parents, or their grandparents. However, I also acknowledge that Jews are not collectively responsible for the crimes of particular Zionist terrorist organizations any more than Palestinian children are responsible for the actions of Hamas. Have you forgotten that the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Haj Amin al-Husseini, was a Nazi collaborator who advocated killing the Jews wherever you find them? Any effort to determine who hated who first, or who attacked who first, at this point is futile. Israel has come to the table trying to establish peace. The Palestinians have made clear that they will accept nothing less than the total destruction of Israel and the death or subjugation of the Jewish people. Obviously, Hamas is bad, but what about all those decades of history before Hamas? What about all of the illegal settlements and the forced expulsion of innocent people from their land? Including the nearly one million Jews who were expelled from the Middle East or North Africa following 1948? Including the centuries of Jewish subjugation and persecution under Islamic governments? Again, no one is innocent in this conflict. Why is Israel suddenly the supreme evil above all others? Why is the Zionist religious claim to the land more valid than other religious claims throughout history? Because we're the chosen people and we paid for it. But that land came from the British Empire who were imperializing the Palestinians and who the Israelis would eventually fight against. You're just a self-hating Jew. Hmm. Let's look at a few quotes from notable Arab leaders. When Arab-American historian Philip Heaty testified before the Anglo-American Committee in 1946, he stated, there is no such thing as Palestine in history. Absolutely not. In 1937, a local Arab leader, Ayuni Bey Abdul Hadi, told the Peel Commission, quote, There is no such country as Palestine. Palestine is a term the Zionists invented. There is no Palestine in the Bible. Our country was for centuries part of Syria. On the other hand, Jews around the world have been praying for return to the land of Israel three times a day ever since they were kicked out by the Romans in 135 AD. But nonetheless, Jews have maintained a constant presence there, even if only as a minority. So you tell me, who really has a deeper cultural or historical claim to the land? In fact, the term Palestinian really didn't become mainstream until after the Six Day War in 1967. Now, I'm not saying that Palestinian Arabs don't have a historic claim to the land. I'm simply saying that it's obvious that the narrative has changed over the years. In particular, Arabs are happy to accept whatever historical narrative is most useful to vilifying Israel and the Jews in general. Do you really think there would be an international outcry for an independent Palestinian state if the region was currently controlled by Egypt, Jordan, Syria, or any other Arab nation? The fact is, the land ought to belong to whoever homesteaded it or rightfully purchased it. Yes, Jews kicked Arabs out of their homes at one point, but it's equally true that Arabs kicked Jews out of their homes all over the world. Where have Jewish people ever gone that they weren't persecuted? Unless both parties can put the violence of the past behind them, there will be no peace. Say that Israel has done nothing wrong and everything they've done is legitimate. Finally, you're getting it. Don't you think? Well, I don't know who you're talking to, but I absolutely reject the idea that Israel hasn't done anything wrong. I simply reject the narrative that Israel is an aggressor encroaching against peaceful people. Both sides in this conflict are guilty, and for all its faults, Israel is far less of an oppressive state than equivalent Arab nations. I oppose states altogether. But that doesn't mean I can't recognize that the U.S. was less oppressive than the Soviet Union, and that Israel is less oppressive than Iran. But some of the children and innocent civilians who have been injured or watched their families and friends be murdered by the IDF are going to want to turn to terrorism to avenge the great tragic losses they've experienced at the hands of Israel? Which If you're going to make that justification, then why weren't the Zionist terrorists of the 1940s that you previously mentioned justified? 
weren't they justified because of the grave injustices done to them by the Nazis, whom the Arabs, under the leadership of Haj Amin al-Husseini, had collaborated with? Not to mention all the terrorist acts against Jews prior to 1948 that were praised by Arab leaders around the world? How about the 1929 Arab riots that displaced Jews from their homes? Terrorism is either justified or it isn't, Kerry. Why are Israel's crimes so much categorically worse than any other government, such that you can sympathize with Palestinian terrorists? It hurts Israel far more in the long run than it helps it in the short term. Self-hater. Well, first, I need to clear something up. I don't hate myself. I love myself, just as I love all of my friends and family, Jew or not, and all of the people on this planet because they're a part of the human race. Okay, so do you condemn those that call for the extermination of Israel and, by extension, the murder or subjugation of Jewish people living there? And claims of anti-Semitism and being a self-hating Jew do nothing but detract from the real historical and justifiable reasons for this conflict. But the truth is that this history and this disproportionate use of force against innocent civilians and the rationalizations that people are making for it aside, the biggest impediment to finding peace in this situation is the tendency, like calling someone a self-hating Jew, to make judgments about individuals without knowing anything about them. It's You're entitled to your opinion, Carrie. But I think there's substantial evidence that the biggest impediment to peace in this conflict is the fact that there is a deeply ingrained belief in Arab and Islamic societies that Jews may only be tolerated if they live in subjugation to an Islamic government. Can anything else explain why Muslims around the world are so universal in their condemnation of Israel while barely batting an eye at the mistreatment of Muslims in other parts of the world? As Rafael Castro writes, Many Islamic scholars regard non-Muslim control of Muslim lands to be unjust and offensive. Yet religious sensitivity to occupation is selective. Chinese subjugation of Muslim Xinjiang, the Indian takeover of the Kashmir, and Russian dominance in the Caucasus are largely ignored. Jewish control of Palestine fuels religious fundamentalism and terrorism throughout the world. The tendency to collectivize individuals into groups and make group judgments about them, such as people saying that all Palestinians want their children to die in the name of killing Jews, or that all Palestinians support Hamas, or on the contrary, that all Jews want to see the destruction of Gaza, even though most of the Jews in Israel approve of Operation Protective Edge. But that's another story. Was that off-the-cuff comment meant to implicate Jews in Israel who aren't part of the government? This is why I'm so skeptical of people who try and claim they're anti-Zionist but not anti-Semitic. Where is the outcry from Arab nations in support of Jewish anti-Zionists like Kerry? Where is the condemnation of the Middle Eastern and North African governments who expelled hundreds of thousands of Jews who had nothing to do with modern Zionism? And for you, Kerry, why can't we condemn the state of Israel when it commits crimes and condemn Hamas and the Palestinian Authority when they commit crimes? What makes Israel the most fundamentally evil of all governments? And the other problem I see in this conflict is believing that one race or class or group of people is better than another. And when you deem yourself part of a group of chosen people, it's pretty clear that you value one part of human life more than any other kind of human life. Then why aren't you condemning all the Arab states that violate this principle? I'll again point out that in Israel, Arab citizens maintain all the same legal rights as Jewish citizens. Arabs sit in the Knesset, on the Supreme Court, and serve in the IDF. Israel is one of the few places in the Middle East where women can vote. In what Arab country will you find the same rights for Jews? In fact, just this month, an Israeli court sentenced a Jewish man to prison for inciting violence against Arabs. In what Arab country will you see Arabs being sent to prison for inciting violence against Jews? But the truth to me, as long as we're collectivizing, is that I always saw Judaism growing up as being a love of family and food. But that's not just being Jewish. That's every single culture on earth. And the sooner that we start recognizing all of the similarities and all of the commonalities between our human lives, I think the sooner we'll be able to stop murdering people in the name of justice and righteousness. But what do I know? I'm just a self-hating Jew that hates all other Jews and wants them all to die and support me. Come on. Look, here's what I have to say. Governments are inherently unjust. The government of Israel has done horrible things, but so has Hamas and the Palestinian Authority. Anti-Semitism and opposition to Jews living in Israel was alive and well long before the advent of modern Zionism, 
And whatever the crimes of Zionist leaders and groups, Arab governments around the world have refused to distinguish between Jews and Zionists, seeing them both as enemies deserving only of second-class citizenship or extermination. As much as I would love to simply say that individuals, be they Jewish or Palestinian, should simply be afforded the right to buy and sell land in the regions they want to live, associating with one another voluntarily, I'm not naive. That's not going to happen anytime soon, and allowing millions of Palestinians to flood into Israel would result in the abolition of Israel and the creation of an Islamic state in which Jews would be murdered and the rest would be subjugated as second-class citizens. I'll end this video with a quote from The Libertarian Case for Israel by Alan Futterman, Rafi Farber, and Walter Bach. While we do not encourage libertarians to take sides in this conflict, we suggest that if they wish to do so, they should side with Israel as the most classically liberal and therefore the most relatively libertarian country in the region. And that is my two cents. You can take it for what it's worth. Thanks everyone for watching. If you liked this video, please hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell to receive notifications of new uploads. And if you're a fan of my channel, please consider supporting me on Subscribestar, Bitbacker, or Patreon. For as low as $1 a month, you'll receive access to patron-exclusive videos, earn the right to participate in patrons-only live streams, join my patrons' group chat on Twitter and Discord, and numerous other rewards. Also, be sure to subscribe to my gaming channel for a chance to hang out and chat during gaming streams. Uploads are every Thursday and Saturday, so stay tuned for more videos.